It's Thursday, June 28th, 2012, a day that will live in infamy, a horrible day for our republic. I'm Alex Jones, and this is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, the Supreme Court betrays the republic and upholds Obamacare. Then, the mainstream media blacks out shocking revelations of a possible false flag event during the London Olympics. Plus, Joe Gilbert, the writer and director of Dreams of My Real Father, talks with Alex Jones about the controversial book and documentary film exposing Obama's true origin and hidden past. Also, why we don't need vaccines with Dr. Joe Wallach. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. When I was in the office this morning and we got the horrible news that the private Federal Reserve was instituting their tax via health care and would have the IRS enforce this takeover, John Bound, one of our producers and researchers, said, you watch, they are going to now sacrifice Holder, at least on the surface, as a distraction from this. Boom, they had the vote today to slap Holder on the wrist for the contempt of Congress. Now, I looked up the statutes. They refer it to the Attorney General, but you can't do that because he's the guy that's in contempt. Or they refer it to the attorney for the District of Columbia, who is also a globalist minion, and they can serve a year in jail. Uh, they've got uh, fines as well. The statute hasn't been changed since the 1890s, or the 1790s, excuse me. So the biggest fine's only $1,000. So uh, there's not much punishment for the guy who helped run guns into Mexico and drugs back into the U.S. to blame the Second Amendment. By the way, that was even the Washington Post now that Wayne LaPierre of the NRA is talking about the drug dealing angle of this. So it is really scaring the system that this information is coming out. But the House uh, has uh, held Mr. Holder in contempt. Uh, he was the deputy attorney general back during Oklahoma City, which they used to demonize the Second Amendment and a lot more. And, but he is still just a minion uh, in the final equation. But that news is nonetheless very, very important. We are going to be talking to Dr. Joel Wallach about the healthcare ruling. We're also going to be talking to the filmmaker who has conclusively, in my view, documented uh, the providence of Obama and who his daddy really is. So that is, that is coming up tonight. Uh, but first here in the teleprompter, free transmission. I covered this for three painful hours on the radio today because it's just another signpost of tyranny. Government-run health care. I had said that I believe they were going to rule for it because it's what the insurance companies wrote. It's what they wanted. They're owned by the big banks. Uh, it's not even really socialist health care, and that's bad enough. It's eugenicist, globalist, death panel health care. And they know exactly what they're doing. But people said, oh, no, in the arguments a few months ago, the Supreme Court said they were going to rule against it. So I said, okay, well, that's a good sign for our country. Uh, but we had one of the Republican-appointed justices go over to make it the 5-4 to four ruling for it. And uh, on this day, upheld the individual health insurance mandate that is the heart of the President Obama's landmark health care law. In fact, out of five issues being looked at, they upheld four. And again, it was in the Wall Street Journal. They had the head of the health care and insurance banker consortium in there, I remember, Last year, they were saying, oh, yeah, we wrote this. We think it's great. And, and we saw in the news today, in fact, we have some of those articles from Investment Watch, also Barron's, stocks exploded for healthcare companies and insurance companies because it makes 35 million people buy insurance and it allows the government and these boards staffed by HMO and insurance company people to say your doctor can't give you a treatment. So this is not a big boon for the doctors or even hospitals in many extents. It is the insurance companies who make you buy their product, already up by 25%, they're talking about 50% increase the next two years, make you buy their product, but wait, it gets worse. It gets a lot worse. The IRS, as was in the bill, 
has already hired 7,500 extra people. They're going to hire another 10,000. And I'm already getting calls, and we're vetting this. They're already months ago, because they knew where the ruling was going, taking money out of people's accounts who don't have insurance. The IRS is, out of your bank accounts, digitally. They already have this capability to, to quote, go towards Medicaid and Medicare, Medicaid and Medicare, because they say you're not buying it. And Rubio talked about this a long time ago, but uh, now it is actually happening. The Supreme Court upholds Obama's health care law. And, and now since health care is socialized, oh, well, the government's going to control what you eat. I mean, they're saying this because, after all, you're costing us all money now. So there's the nightmare social engineering uh, aspect to all of this. So uh, Obama is uh, very, very proud of it. The Washington Post is very, very proud of it. It's all a giant joke to them that they've rammed this through. And you've got all these useful idiots, the same folks that said, oh, praise God, Obama's been elected. I'm going to get a free car, free house. You didn't get jack squat, but a globalist engineered Agenda 21 depression. Rubio argued that millions of Americans will face being out of compliance with the IRS for not having health insurance coverage. Well, he didn't argue that. I love how they make it partisan. It's in the legislation that the IRS is going to come after you, and it's already happening. Okay, let's continue here. Obamacare, it's about enriching banksters and Wall Street. And Kurt Nemo at InfoWars.com goes through all of the admissions by the lobbyists, all of them. He has links to it where they admit they would make giant profits off of this. And this is Kurt Nemo back in 2010, two years ago broke down what it would do with all the links as the fat cats bragged. And again, it's already gone up 25% since the law was put in, not even implemented. They're talking about 50% increase. Oh, and by the way, pull up the Associated Press, guys. It doesn't cover pre-existing conditions for children. But I saw Obama in his press conference saying that today. Total screw job. Let's the insurance companies cut back on the care, set up death panels to ration care, and make you buy it. Unbel have you researched the unbelievable garbage going on with the national health care system, NHS in England and other places? Paul Watson, thank God, could go to an herbalist and get healed. One month couldn't get to see a doctor. When he finally got in, massive taxes in England. He pays for this. They gave him a packet of aspirins and stuff and said, go home. Still couldn't get well. Couldn't go see a private doctor. You got to get bureaucrat permission for that. Was able to get well on herbs and things. This is what we're talking about, folks. Tom Daschle, who helped write it with Mitt Romney, said, you're 65, you don't get eye surgery. Yeah, there's National Review running the Associated Press, if you scroll down, via AP. Obamacare does not cover pre-existing conditions in children. Here's the National News article, also posted at Infowars.com. Ten years of Obamacare would cost $1.76 trillion for more than originally claimed. So there's also, it's meant to bankrupt us. That's, that's the plan. Okay, shifting gears now uh, into the stage terror of 7-7 and 9-11, we have a report here. Whistleblower reveals plan to evacuate London during Olympics. 200,000 casket linings on standby, says undercover journalist who infiltrated security team. And I've talked to Tony Gosling at Bilderberg.org, great investigative journalist. I've talked to others. This guy is a well-known investigative journalist in England. He's produced TV shows nationally. We're not going to obviously say who he is. He went in, and they didn't even want him to pass a test. The dumber, the better. He put him in, and, and they're, they're massing foreign troops. They're saying this big event is coming right when it ends. Then I thought about how the Munich games in one day in September they have Michael Douglas voicing it, and, and it's Academy Award winning. I saw it when it came out in the late 90s. German intelligence staged the terror attacks and hired the Muslims and had front men who thought they were actually fighting for Islam or whatever as the front people, and they staged hijackings. And, I mean, this is like at the end of the main film one day in September. In fact, pull that up so folks can see that. I saw it over at the Arbor Cinema when it came out. I didn't even know about False Flag. I was just getting politically, you know, awakened things. In fact, I said 99. I think it was given out like 97. I don't remember. Point is, I was just 99. Okay, I was right. Original memory was correct. 
uh, again, we use the computers to check my electrochemical system, but to make sure it's accurate, but I was accurate, 99. And I'm looking at this, and, they're, and at the end of the movie, oh God, Muslims are horrible. By the way, the government staged it. <laughs> we gotta pull clips of this sometimes. I mean, look at it, out of 10 stars, it's got 7.9. That's rare to get 7.9. That's, I mean, it's a very well done documentary, but they spent like a minute in the, at the end of it to admit the whole thing was staged. So this fits in, folks. Whistleblower reveals plans to evacuate London during Olympics. 200,000 casket linings on standby, says undercover journalist who infiltrated security team. And he tried to bring this before he brought it to us. He's got it on one radio show, Tony Gosling's in England, that's on mainline broadcast radio. He tried to bring it to the mainstream dominant press. They said, we already know about this. We've been told there is a blackout. And that's the new article out on today. Here are four clips from the live radio interview we did today on my syndicated radio show that airs 12 to 3 p.m. Eastern at InfoWars.com. Here it is. Uh, well, um, I was approached in one of my classes and um, uh, uh, by a student, and he offered to sell me marijuana in the classroom. This is a student training to be an Olympic security officer. Um, later on, one of the training officers uh, was actually training us saw him doing it to someone else, and he turned to him and said, here, mate, can you do that outside, wait for the break? He actually said that. He didn't kick him out, he didn't phone the police, he didn't do anything. He just said, you wait for a bit later so you can do that in a break. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. They're putting in a, a, a level of security that is inadequate. I'm telling you that now. I was at the training facility a couple of weeks ago, and people didn't know how to search a bag. You know, they were standing there, and it was like a little test. And I was standing next to one of the trainers, and the guy was going through uh, trying to search a bag, and he was just basically staring at it, you know, touching it with his hands. And um, the trainer said, it's all right, mate. I know what you mean. And I laughed, and I looked at him and I said, I'm glad you did. Can you explain it to me? <laughs> what was he doing? <laughs> and the trainer just said to me, move on. Don't ask. As a GFR security officer, I'm going to be involved in apparently the evacuation of London or a possible evacuation of London. Um, that's exactly what they've, they've, they've told us. Um, they actually spent quite a lot of time um, talking about um, the evacuation of London and its defining moment in the history of London. Um, more so, really, than they told us about how to search someone and actually the mechanics of, you know, being the, a security officer. This was, they were very uh, keen on getting this information into us, that after the Olympics, we would be involved in something. Now, they weren't going to say what it was, obviously, because you want to need to know, but we were going to be involved in this evacuation of London. And uh, a friend of mine said to me, he says, well, how would you evacuate London? All right, let me stop you because, again, this is so bombshell. It's not that they're just planning for a contingency. They're saying this is going to happen. They're saying that we, as security officers, are going to be involved in the evacuation of London. That's what I've got. I've got that's my quote. That's what's written down. Um, it's not a possible evacuation. I've said that. I said, well, maybe it's a possible evacuation because this sounds crazy. But actually, they're talking about, they said, you're going to be involved in the evacuation of London and you will be dealing with members of the public. Um, if you live in Greenwich or in South East London near Woolwich Barracks, you will hear Chinook helicopters going backwards and forwards all night long. And that's them busting in uh, these troops. And um, uh, an army, a British Army major uh, who's a doctor there told me that he's got to look after um, 100,000 troops as they come through Woolwich Barracks and then they moved on to other barracks in and around London. And he said he's seeing a lot of Americans and he's seeing a lot of Germans and a lot of other nationalities. And I said, what are these UN troops? And he said, yeah, I think so. And they use all these events to acclimate us to martial law. They've had NLE 09, all these other events. They use NATO, G20. They bring in the foreigners to do this. It's all part of just conditioning the security services that all of this is normal. And media whitewashes Olympic security scandal. They admit there's a scandal, but don't talk about the whistleblower. This guy was involved in exposing steak knife uh, and other code, uh, code named leaders of staged terror attacks in England. So very, very, very powerful report. Okay, shifting gears out of that, TSA's new celebrity free pass, Jeff Lewis versus Beyonce. House panel to TSA stop patting down the Beyonce, being sarcastic, she's not going to blow up a plane. 
So now they're saying they won't pat down the Congress people and the trendy Wendy's. They're just going to grab your five-year-old's genitals. Train them to, to the Jerry Sandusky. They ought to name all the airports. Jerry Sandusky of Austin. Jerry Sandusky of New York. Jerry Sandusky of Los Angeles. And, and, and they can all, the TSA can all wear a rubber mask of Jerry Sandusky. So we've got that report. There are certain people that are well known. You just have to use common sense because if you start patting them down, people are going to say they're patting down, you know, Mr. Trendy. She's not going to blow up a plane, explains Rogers. The whole point is we're all slaves. That's the political correctness. We don't pat down the Muslims. We leave them alone and gang rape you. But we run real Al Qaeda when they attack Liberty and Syria. So, but never mind that. Okay, J.P. Morgan trading losses may reach nine billion. How about quadrillion? J.P. Morgan created this fraud on purpose. Jamie Dimon, it's not two billion, it's nine billion. On and on and on. In April, the bank generated an internal report that showed the losses, assuming worst case conditions, would reach eight billion to nine billion, according to a person who reviewed the report. Doesn't matter; they'll just get our tax money. But if the IRS claims you didn't buy proper health insurance, they'll give you penalties and interest and take your house because they care about your children's health care, <laughs> which they're not made to give you under the plan written by bankers that own the insurance companies, pieces of crap like Jamie Dimon. But hey, don't let the facts get in your way. I had a Democrat call in today and he said, I don't believe insurance companies wrote it. And I said, they admit they did. Let me give you proof. No, I just don't believe it doesn't matter they're making all these big giant profits you know everything's fine but we have a clip what do we have a clip of oh howard dean saying it here here this is why howard dean got shunted off here's howard dean a couple years ago telling you p brain here it is but i think people really wanted to see more change they voted for real change and a lot of republicans voted for real change too we haven't delivered it the health care uh, bill, you know, a lot of people sitting around with special interests making deals. The Senate bill is essentially written by the insurance companies. I told the president twice uh, in two different meetings that I couldn't support the bill if it didn't have a robust public option. And if it uh, at least if they didn't have uh, uh, some something that was going to protect consumers from these rapid uh, premium increases. And you know what? Uh, the White House counts me as wavering. The insurance companies are the problem, and we're giving them a version of a bailout. But Kucinich got pressured, so did Dean, and they shut up. Again, if you're a good commie, you think you're going to free lunch, you never get it. Big monopoly capitalists want socialism and communism, but only at one level to steal it for themselves. They wrote it. They invented it. And just because you're emotionally attached to this, admit you've been conned. Admit you've been conned. The globalists are trying to take over the libertarians, too. They want full-spectrum dominance. That's what they talk about. The final revolution, total takeover. They're in control because they know what they're doing. They don't have an ideology other than gang raping you. They're pirates. That's their ideology. Let's shift gears. We told you this years ago, but here it is. Texas College hacks drones in front of DHS. We've got a new drone video just went up tonight. What, what did I title that video? Uh, the drone wars begin. Yeah, the drone wars begin. A group of researchers led by Professor Todd Humphrey from University of Texas at Austin were able to break in and take over drones with just $1,000. Well, these drones are meant to fight zombie fluoride heads, so that doesn't matter. It's our tax money used against us. Here is uh, natural news shifting gears out of the drones. Where are all the dead bodies from swine flu? It was supposed to kill millions worldwide four years ago. It didn't. It was proven to make people sick. Mike Adams goes over all the numbers of that giant hoax that they used against the people. Now, I've got the daily quote for you, and I know what you've been watching for. I know what you've been listening for. And that is the winners of the reporters' contest. And I got some good news for you, and I got some bad news for you. So we're going to be getting to that in a moment. But first, French writer Lou Cadet Clapiers. Lou Cadet Clapiers. Did I say it right? The art of pleasing is the art of deception. Lou Cadet Clapiers. What pleases me is plain speaking, truth, reality. 
What's so refreshing about Ron Paul? His son is still a great patriot, but it's unrefreshing to see him begin to walk down that political road. So the art of pleasing is the art of deception. Okay, that said, with the quote, let us now shift gears to the winners, drum roll please, of the reporter contest. I don't feel like I'm doing justice here announcing the winners. I said, look, I'm not 100% ready. I know who I think is going to win, but I want to wait till tomorrow. And they're like, Alex, it's been two months and two days since the contest closed. You said you would probably announce it in a month. We understand there were 600 plus people that actually got into the contest and followed the rules. It's down to the top 10 males, top 10 females. And so there's a compromise here tonight. I will give you the winner, the female winner right now of the female side of the competition, representing humanity, male and female, who are one. The globalists advertise it as we are different and sell us that. Uh, all the women that, that entered were winners. All the men that entered were winners. I have spent days conservatively, I mean, we're talking five, six days probably in the last two months, trying to watch these and everybody watching them and trying. I'm sure there are people who didn't make the top 20 or top 10 that deserve to be there. I'm sure. The point is you took action. You showed how big this audience is. You put out reports that thousands have watched, sometimes hundreds of thousands have watched. You've done an incredible job. You've all been winners. You know, I never watched those, 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 those game shows or those shows, you know, American Idol, uh, America's Got Talent. But I finally, like 10 o'clock last night, saw the second hour of that show Howard Stern host, because me and my wife, we put the kids to bed. We said, oh, let's turn TV on. It was Howard Stern and America's Got Talent. I felt terrible when they were having to vote this person, vote that person. It was funny. I was watching TV, and I was thinking, my gosh, this is what this is like. And everybody, I mean, of the top 10 women, I, any of you could do it. And all the other women and all the other reporters, it, it was just insane how good you were. And we have a plan to try to get enough sponsors, enough capital to turn loose all these great leaders, men and women, to be able to have you work here or as correspondents in other areas to produce reports, whether it's part-time or full-time. It's a money issue. I want to hire like four of the women and four of the men. I want to bring them here. I want to put them in the seat and send them out and put them on airplanes and fly them all over the world. I mean, I don't have the money. Donate to us. Buy the books, the videos. I mean, I spent half my time going, buy this video so I make $10 so I could try to fill the gas tank up here with the 30-something people I got. I'm greedy to fight tyranny. I'm greedy to have these great minds here and put them to work fighting tyranny and unloosing the power. This contest was the most successful ever. It has been so incredible to see all that you have to offer. And here we are like five minutes till live airtime. We're still taping the live show. I'll have to like loop back in and do part of the show like last night or two nights ago. Everybody won in different ways. And again, I had no idea we'd get a thousand entries, 600 that follow the rules plus, it's like 640 something. This has basically, we've had to do whole weeks of rebroadcast because of this. So it's not perfect. Uh, you know, we've got people like Jennifer Collins, Melissa Melton, uh, Linda West. We had impromptu, non-scientific votes. Linda West won. But the final equation, it's about following the basics of it being a news report. And, and you all did a great job. And I want to talk to you all with our tiny skeleton crew is busy doing news. So we're, we don't even have a division that hires. And then it's like consulting. How do you know who to hire? But we want to offer you all a job. Okay, I'm going to mention these top three women. And I want to tell you all we want to talk to you, try to talk about our budget, try to hire you, try to get you here. Or if not, have you as a correspondent. Let's be clear. It's hard, but uh, I got to tell you, because of her humor, I mean, you know, you've got poise, intelligence, beauty, smoky voice, Linda West. She'd be everybody's winner. But when it comes to doing news and the humor, all of it, Jennifer Collins is the winner. So there you go. <laughs> You're the winner. You're the winner. Melissa Melton, great report, great focus, great intellect, uh, everything. I mean, Linda West, 
I kind of let about 15 employees vote. I mean, Linda West probably would have been my final absolute pick, but in a way, we need people that can just produce and do it all like she did. We'll see what happens. Hey, just because you win $5,000 doesn't mean you actually get hired to work here. So everybody's a winner. All the top 10, all the hundreds of women that entered. I never felt, uh, I, ne I never imagined it would feel so bad here doing this right now when it should feel so good. All of you won by entering. Uh, so, uh, Melissa Melton and Linda West, um, you are the runners up right there, and we'd like to talk to, to you about working with us. Jennifer Collins, you win the $5,000. We want to talk to you about working for InfoWars.com. So, good job, ladies. Incredible. We're going to go to break and come back with two interviews. A lot of hiring these reporters is to take some of the weight off me. I've been talking about six hours today. I mean, let me tell you, there's nobody in media works harder than I do except my crew. And we want to make you part of the crew. The male winners tomorrow. I said today, I normally am decisive. I, I can't decide. I can, and again, I want to hire like 10 people, but I can't afford it. So we're looking at what's happening. We're looking at what's going on. Folks, go to InfoWarsShop.com, buy some books, buy some videos, support the sponsors, get some money in here. Because, I mean, these are incredible people. I want to get them in here. But they got to have editors to support them. They got to have IT people. I mean, it is a InfoWars costs four plus million dollars to run a year. And we do it shoestring budget. That sounds like a lot. It's not. The rent on something this size in New York would be four million dollars. Instead, it's like, I don't know, what's sixteen thousand dollars times twelve? I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a big egg to crack, and I hate spending my time trying to raise money, but Become a member, 15 cents a day, prisonplanet.tv. There she is, the winner. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time until the break. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. Sick of the globalist eugenesis control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. InfoWars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at InfoWars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Again, thank you for joining us on this June 28th, 2012 transmission. A very sad day. The Supreme Court traitorously sided with Obama to say that they can take our money as a tax and redistribute it to offshore banks and corporations that want to create a monopoly and to illegal aliens as a uh, domestic uh, army against the republic. This is sedition against the republic. Unbelievable. And it, it's covered in the film by Joel Gilbert, award-winning documentary filmmaker, Dreams from My Real Father, a story of reds and deception. My dad, who I respect a lot, smart guy, a physician, he, that day, he heard the show, uh, he came over and he said, I want a copy of that from our warehouse. And I said, here. And he said, I'm going to go, I mean, the interview sounded interesting, but I'm going to go watch this. I called him a few days later, because we had him on last week. I finally called him this morning. I said, what'd you think? And he said, in fact, I wrote it down here, chillingly convincing. And my dad said it, 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 it was horrifying to know how this guy has been manufactured. And my father follows the news, like many people, and he's noticed it's coming out that his dad wasn't tortured, you know, the fake one in Kenya, uh, by 
the British. They now admit that's a fraud. And his name really was Barry Sotero, and he really was in a mosque. He really did give up his citizenship in Indonesia. But that it was all another cover story that the State Department had thrown out his Kenyan dad, said that he wasn't his dad, looks nothing like him. And then you look at all the new information that it turns out a couple of other investigative journalists pointed out years ago. Um, our guest, Joel Gilbert, discovered it on his own research, but that happens a lot with great findings, is that separate researchers come to the same point. And you see this film, Dreams from My Real Father, and we're going to get an update right now, and it is just unbelievable that this guy is an admitted pornographer, his father. The evidence is overwhelming. Frank Marshall Davis, an admitted communist, that Obama quotes his speeches word for word in his writings, that Obama's grandfather, and this is in the book Obama wrote, would go and visit weekly with this guy when his mother was out of the country, and that there was some weird unspoken thing between his grandfather and him. Well, yeah, it's his daddy. And he talks about him 20-something times in his book, and it goes on and on. And then his mother, clearly his mother, in these porno photos with Mr. Davis coming out in his collection, and then there's Davis on the couch that she's on in the porno photos. It's mind-blowing. It goes on and on from there. But I want to talk about the fact that this film's starting to get attention despite corporate media blackout. By the way, it's available at InfoWarsShop.com. We have it um, if you want it, and you get a free citizen rule book with it, and it supports our work, but also his work. Uh, Infowarshop.com, but I'm telling you, that's why I get so excited about this. This is coffin nails to these people. This is dynamite information. Talks like him, looks like him, hung out with him. The other guy's not his dad. State Department said that. Obama's got dead people, social security numbers. I'm going to shut up now. The point is they're, they're sealing his records for a reason. The Kenya thing is a cover story. Uh, incredible. Uh, Joel Gilbert, thank you so much for joining us today. There's a reason they never give us the real birth certificate. You've got the floor. Recap your discovery, uh, where all this has gone, the response you're seeing uh, here today with your remarkable film. Thank you, Alex. Uh, great to be back with you. Uh, let me start by showing you a couple of things and that in light of the health care uh, ruling today, I want to show you this article. This was written by Frank Marshall Davis, Obama's real father. There he is. And he wrote this article in the Honolulu Record, Socialized medicine preferred. He also wrote an article for them called How to Become a Communist. And Obama bamboozled gullible middle-class America with a laughable illusion that he was the son of a Kenyan goat herder who stood above politics so he could bring people together. He sold himself as the multicultural ideal so Barack Obama was perceived as a nice man with an inspiring family story. This film proves that Obama intentionally hid a deeply disturbing family background and a Marxist political foundation in order to get elected. The national health care for socialists and communists is simply a socialist tool to eliminate the upper and middle classes by transferring wealth. That's why poor quality, Long waits and higher taxes don't matter to them. They want to give away the middle class's health care to the poor and illegals. They want to tax and regulate middle class employers out of business. And they get to the point where the middle class retirement will evaporate into a bankrupt socialist state and will just have one lower class of an impoverished society with the political elites that control the wealth. And Obama is planning that by the end of his next term, America will be irreversibly socialist without ever realizing how it happened. Uh, in the book, Dreams from My Father, that Obama wrote, has been discredited at every turn. He spends 2,500 words on Frank Marshall Davis, the only person that he names by his real name, and the only person that transcends four decades and four continents from the beginning of his life all the way, even after Davis died, he talks about Davis. Uh, this is my DVD, which I know you're selling on Infowars.com, Dreams for My Real Father. This illustrates Obama's entire life in socialism, 
It explains how he arrived at Occidental College at age 18 as a committed revolutionary Marxist and how Davis indoctrinated him during his formative years after his mother brought him back from Indonesia. Uh, the film illustrates how the Kenyan Obama was simply a, a cover story that covered up an illicit affair. And we've discovered, as you've mentioned, 30 photos that Frank Marshall Davis took of, Ob of Obama's mother, Ann Dunham, that shows that there was an intimate relationship. And by the way, it's admitted, he later came out and admitted he was a secret pornographer publishing under pseudonyms, did these Betty Page deals, these are his, it's a dead ringer for Obama's mother with this other woman on his couch that he does in all these interviews that you have film of and photos. I mean, it, it's just, you've got him. I, I'm sorry, it, it's just unbelievable. Well, not only that, I, because I did so much investigation, I've got continuing information still coming out as breaking news. I've got uh, letters that Davis wrote in his own handwriting. They're being published next Monday uh, by the World Net Daily. By the way, they had a wonderful Happy Father's Day. They wished last week to Frank Marshall Davis right there. Uh, Who's they, doing that, Corsi or Farah? Because I want to get both of them on with you. Corsi will be uh, writing about these letters where Davis writes in his own handwriting. He says that he was the author of Sex Rebel Black, that it was all true. It was an autobiography. He also has many more nefarious things he writes that I'll wait. You can check World Net Daily next Monday. It's going to be out and you can see the whole story. The point, though, is that Obama has a very dark background. His father was 25, 30 years under FBI surveillance. He was alleged to be a Soviet spy. And this was possibly real because Communist Party USA had many spies, including those that stole U.S. nuclear uh, atomic secrets and gave them to the Russians, helping to ignite the Cold War. Uh, Davis was a propagandist and an ideologue. And in today's ruling, really every day, anything Obama says or does, you can see his infatuation with his failed ideology. Socialism failed in Russia. It failed in Europe. It's failing all over the world. But they don't think that maybe there's something wrong with the, uh, with the system. They think it's, well, it's the wrong person. The right person has to uh, implement this deadly Marxist agenda and eliminate all the upper and middle classes. Uh, this film shows his entire life in socialism. And I urge everyone to go to uh, Infowars.com and, and please buy a copy of the DVD. Very well said. Uh, there's a lot of other facets to this that uh, we didn't cover because you know, I've, I've since watched the film a second time. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, really, people need to get a copy at Infowarsshop.com. But, 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 but more importantly, just, just walk through what they're going to see Give people a boil down of the film and why it's so important. Well, it's going to start by showing Obama's early family history. And you can just take a checklist of everything in Obama's book and everything in, in my film. You can start with his early family history. And it's obvious from the facts, from the proven facts, that Obama's story that his father went to Harvard when he was two years old and it broke up the family is false. There never was an Obama family, ever. There's no evidence his parents even met in the 60s. Uh, so my film shows an intimate relationship between Davis and Dunham, and then a lifelong nurturing of Obama by Davis throughout his teenage years. Then Obama arrives at Occidental College, goes to all the Marxist meetings with the Marxist professors. He goes to New York City, just like in his book, but he has all benevolent things going on. We show the reality. He attended socialist scholars conferences. Only committed Marxists went to these conferences. I believe we have evidence he was involved in something called the May 19 Communist Organization, which was an above ground front group for the old weather underground. We've got him involved in that, whereas he doesn't even say where he was or what he did during those years at Columbia. It's like a missing time. He says he was in the library, but we think otherwise. He goes to the Chicago and we've given evidence it was with the help of Bill Ayers' father, Thomas Ayers, that got him a grant. and. Obama follows in his real father's footsteps in reverse. Davis went from Chicago to Hawaii to organize. He was sent by the Communist Party to help orchestrate a takeover of the island on the orders of the Kremlin through Communist Party USA because they wanted to get rid of U.S. forces in Hawaii, which were an obstacle to Soviet expansion in Asia. So Obama follows in his father's footsteps in reverse. He goes from Hawaii to Chicago to organize 
and he's got his network, his father's network there, the Jarrett family, Valerie Jarrett's father, Vernon Jarrett, uh, Bill Ayer's father. That's Tom. why all these incredible elitist terrorist weathermen bring him in like a prince. I mean, I mean, the entire time. But again, then you've got the CIA connections in the family. Some researchers think that they were like deep cover infiltrating the communist. But then you've got the pornographers and, and all this. Bottom line, Obama is totally blackmailed by this information. There's no question. I think it's very dangerous when the president of the United States has such secrets. He can easily be, be blackmailed. Uh, people don't talk about it much, but I've talked to people in the intelligence community who all agree that it was too much of a coincidence that Bill Clinton's talking to Monica Lewinsky on a cell phone and all of a sudden China got most favored nation status when the Chinese embassy has the ability to pick up phone calls all over the city. Uh, so anything could happen when this secret, if I can figure it out, don't think that Putin hasn't figured it out. There was that call we talked about, uh, the discussion last time where when uh, Obama leaned over to Medvedev and said, I'll be more flexible after the election. And Medvedev said, I'll tell Vladimir. Now that make your skin crawl if you know what you know after you see this DVD. So you'll see Obama rise using through Acorn. I call him Acorn's front man in Chicago land. That's who Obama was. He helped lay the foundation for the subprime mortgage crisis when he represented Acorn suing Citibank. He uh, sued for the motor voter law, which the 9-11 hijackers got, got to vote under and got all their ID. Uh, it shows his history with Bill Ayers on these foundations, funneling the foundation money back to Jeremiah Wright and back to Ayers. It's an entire life history in corruption and socialism. Uh, if, if Obama had not been elected president, he would be just another Chicago politician swimming in a cesspool of corruption. And he brought that cesspool to Washington, D.C., along with David Axelrod, who he met through Bill Ayer's father, Thomas Ayer's. Axelrod was a lobbyist for Commonwealth Edison. So I've put together all the pieces that everybody is, feels is pretty strange into a cohesive story where you can understand where he came from and why he does these things and why he associates with these people and why he aspires to a Marxist socialist worldview, because he is pursuing the dreams from his real father. If you were talking to the American people, say on Nightline right now, to five, six, seven million people, I mean, here you're talking to over a million in the aggregate, that if you were talking to just Joe Schmo, or, or let's say you were given five minutes on Jay Leno's show, or let's say you were given uh, 10 minutes at the Super Bowl, what would you impart to them about this? Because they're going to say, hey, communism's dead. It's, you know, it, sure, it, China's communist, and sure, you know, they're putting the Red Stars back on the tanks in Russia, and sure, we've got socialist health care, and sure, Obama hangs out with a weatherman, and sure, uh, again, mm -hmm. people, people, you know, hear this stuff about communists. The media told them this doesn't exist anymore. Well, I would say that all of this discussion that we've heard over the past few years about where Obama was born, all these little things, was just subterfuge that was orchestrated by Obama to hide this deeply dark history and who he is and where he came from and who indoctrinated him. And he was indoctrinated by Frank Marshall Davis, uh, a committed, lifelong communist and Marxist. Uh, all you have to do to understand Obama is to ask first the question, instead of where's the birth certificate, the question is, who's the real father? And then once you see who the real father is, he's got an endless uh, amount of his policies, all of his uh, life history. He was for wealth redistribution. He tried to uh, uh, condemn America, condemn America as an imperialist, warlike country that should uh, withdraw all its influence from all over the world and shrink back into an isolationist mode with one class of impoverished people. This was the communist ideal, and this is what people should understand, that these socialists, they don't compare America to the rest of the world. They compare America to a socialist utopia. So for these socialists, America is hell and they always feel they have to change it radically to achieve the socialist utopia. But we've seen again and again in history, just take East Germany and West Germany after the war. 
East Germany adopted national socialism and communism, and West Germany had a free market. Now, 50 years later, we have a vibrant, wealthy West Germany, and we had an impoverished uh, East Germany, the same thing North and South Korea. So what's most disturbing is it's a failed ideology. It's failing even in its uh, middle level uh, incarnation in Europe and all these European entitlement societies, they're failing. Obama is casting us in this direction of failed socialism instead of the free market, which built the wealth and greatness of this country that helped preserve the peace and bailed out the rest of the world so many times. Uh, so I would tell everybody on Nightline, go to Infowarshop.com and buy the DVD. Well, exactly. I mean, I was just wondering what you would say to just the average person. But, but again, I want to go one, one level deeper here with you. Look at how stocks are up for health care right now. Some would say, well, they've gotten their answer that now things are stabilized. They know which way things are going. But select big mega corporations, none dare call a conspiracy from the 70s breaks this down, a book we carry, that there is a certain group of rich elitists that want to fund socialism and communism because they think they're going to control the state. They're going to be offshore. They're going to use it to get corporate welfare. And so that's where you have the communist in people who are really almost like their operatives to go out and take over society. And then, uh, and of course, they always wreck things. Then they always put these corrupt fat cat oligarchs in charge over it. And I think that's where you finally can short circuit the so-called left is showing them these facts and explaining to them that it is the mega rich elite of a small group of them that are monopoly men. Carol Quigley wrote about this at Georgetown with the communist and socialist forces that are actually waging war against the other corporations, businesses, middle class families, the engines of entrepreneurial uh, wealth that, that, that we know uh, are, are the engine of everything good. I mean, communism is a nightmare hell. Their argument is once we exterminate any freedom, then we'll have a utopia. I mean, these people are just, are just demons. I mean, I'm ranting there about this you know, economic theorem, but from my research, that's the way the world really works is the Maury Strongs and the David Rockefellers who, who are robber barons and who want to use communism as the vehicle to destroy their competition. Well, those, those two forces the, uh, will eventually collide because their interests will collide. In the meantime, the socialists and communists use crony capitalism to further their endeavors by making all these promises along the way. But I think just like the middle class are pawns and they will be discarded, these uh, oligarchs and the Rockefellers will probably be discarded as well. Okay, I got to stop you. That is an incredibly astute answer. That would have been my answer. I've known no one else that would have that answer. I'm not trying to say I've got all the things. Like I'm impressed, but I mean, I personally am impressed from my research. That is exactly right from history. We've seen similar things like this before. The elite doing this are going to destroy themselves. And plus, they're making a giant dependent group of people. I mean, this is a nightmare. This is a... The, the, you couldn't screw up humanity worse than what they're doing. Well, I think uh, the only way we can stop this is if we get this film to everybody in the country, uh, because you asked me what would I tell people in, in a minute or two. The, the issues, the reason that's hard to do is because, number one, Obama spent 20 years building up this false background, going on these trips to Kenya, uh, writing in his book, he spends, you know, 200 pages uh, about his uh, going to Kenya. And That's why his publicist says it for 16 years, and it's so. And we're like, look, the proof is your wife says you went back to your homeland, but that was the cover. They 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 ridiculously say we're lying about what's admitted fact, but that fact is a fraud they put out. Right. So they've been mis. Obama is the king of misdirection. He misdirects people to look in the wrong place. Once I realized that the most likely father was Frank Marshall Davis and that the, the Obama Kenyan story was nothing but a, a cover up for illicit affair, it wasn't that hard. I found all the pictures, all the video, all the writings of Davis, and it wasn't that difficult, but he used misdirection. And on top of the misdirection, you have the fact that his election was not a sudden political phenomenon. It was the culmination of an American socialist movement that has been penetrating quietly the economy, universities, and the media for decades. I can't even get this film on any of the major networks, 
and even Newsmax, which we, we for years, and I advertised my films on Newsmax before, including Atomic Jihad, Ahmadinejad's coming war and Obama's politics of defeat. Newsmax, I paid them money and they called me in the morning for my banner campaign and said, we, it's been pulled. We've canceled your banner ad for Dreams for My Real Father. I said, why? They said, well, uh, we, we, we want to move more to the center. We don't want to uh, offend anybody. So even the conservative news outlets are being seduced by this uh, need to, to capitulate to uh, this uh, leftist agenda and censor. Joel, Joel, it's worse than that. You've hit the zeitgeist. You've hit Count Dracula right in the heart with a big stake. And they don't want you to drive it all the way through. This is dangerous, buddy. I mean, this, let me tell you, people who haven't seen the film, they don't know what we're talking about. In fact, guys, can we roll while people are watching just his trailer without audio? That's what we did on the radio show. People also watch on the web. And people have got to go to InfoWorkshop.com right there. It's the newest product up there. You can see the, see the trailer right there. But, but we'll roll the trailer in the background while you're talking. I mean, look, it's his mother bent over his couch with another woman. It's, he's a pornographer. All this stuff. It's, it's his voice. It's his face. It's his teeth. It's his daddy. In his own book, he writes about him more than anybody. More than his mommy. I mean, I mean, this is who he's talking about in Dreams of His Father because it's really an ode to his communist father. And everything he's doing is for, I mean, it, it, is, it is crystal clear. That's why he goes to Chicago and is suddenly the darling of the ruling communist. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, he is royalty. He is the royal princeling because these communists are all about sneaking around and infiltrating. They know they're hated. They know they're scum. They know no one wants them. So they take over the universities, banking, media, everywhere, infesting everything. I mean, that's why they don't want your film out there because it will destroy them. Well, Obama, once you see this film, you'll realize that Obama is his father's son. And his father is Frank Marshall Davis, a bitter, angry, lifelong communist. And they, since the 1980s, when Clinton, uh, when uh, Obama was going to these socialist scholars conferences, their strategy was to use code words like problem solving and fair play and push the Democratic Party to the far left. That was their strategy. 20, 30 years later, Obama working in that system, Project Vote, ACORN, all those uh, different organizations that he helped build and promote, they succeeded in turning the Democrats into the Democratic Socialist Party with an entire media culture protecting them from learning the truth. Uh, this film puts the truth all together, I believe, in the common sense of America, especially middle America. And the more this film gets out there, I think the more chance there is that we can turn around this deadly Marxist agenda that Obama has brought to the United States, to the White House, through the dreams from his real father, which is none other than Frank Marshall Davis. Listen. The film is fourteen ninety five at InfoWars.com. You can get it with the free citizen rule book, InfoWarsShop.com. They can also get it from other great places out there like your website. We'll give that out in a moment. But all of that aside, all of that aside, I have put out films like The Obama Deception, seen more than 40 million times online. I have put out other films. I have reached, in the last three years conservatively, 600 million people on YouTube alone. I mean, I can go through all the pages, all the sites. One of my eight YouTube sites has, you know, 220 million views. I'm going to tell you right now, obviously, at the price you've got it, the deal you gave us, so we can be competitive with it, you're not in this for money. But I understand there's the strategy of, hey, we invested a lot, we flew all over the you know, place, did this, we got to get our money back. I would tell you now, though, with the media ignoring you, before they put the kill switch in and everything, I would suggest, I would suggest, I'll say this live on air right now, we can talk about it when you get off air, but I'm going to say it in front of God and everybody else, that you may be Dr. Corsi yourself, whoever, I don't care if you did it with World Net Daily by yourself, whatever, I just know how to launch this. Get here like a PBS show, you know, where they sit there and show the film and then say, you know, you're watching this film, if you want to support us, get it here. That's the model to go with. Do a production where you stop throughout it, say, get the DVD. Because I never did this on purpose. I discovered this just because I wanted to get the word out. And so I put my films out for free, and then that's what made them big anyways and ended up selling more. And I was like, wow, I did the right thing, and it actually lets me fund building this whole operation. 
Well, I'm um, telling you, I'm consulting live here on air. Okay. I would put a date out. In fact, it'll scare them so bad they'll come after you probably. I'd say, because you, you don't want to wait, I'd say two weeks from now. You're going to present the film and new findings, put it on a big YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, I've got not just mine, but I've got a couple others that are, you know, big. Uh, they don't even have my name on it. I don't even care about my naming on it. And then have the announcement throughout the film. If you support this info, call here and, you know, get the DVD. You'd sell 10 times as many. But more importantly, it would get seen probably 10 million times. So you can, you can sit there and send out a few 10,000 copies, have a little effect, a few, you know, groups show it. Or you can hit this New World Order square in the eye with double lock bucket, point blank range, double barrel. I would do... The, I would use YouTube, their own globalist tool now, to annihilate them. And, and they'll try stuff. You know, they'll, they'll try all sorts of stuff to try to block it. But I'm telling you, I'm ranting. I'm telling you, execute that, Joel. Let me tell you something. Uh, don't think that I haven't thought uh, a long time about how to make sure that this gets delivered to middle America, not only through selling it through your site and through, uh, through other outlets, but we have a very, very unique program that you've never heard of. It's not YouTube, and it's already being implemented. And we're going to announce it probably on your show in about a week from now. And it will blow you away, and it will blow away the uh, media blockout on this film and force them to cover it. It's not film screenings, and it's not YouTube, but I'm going to announce it on this show. Wait a minute. Let me guess. You're going to put these in newspapers free. Nope. So people have done that. No, we're, we're going we're gonna to tell you next week, and you'll be amazed. Well, I'm excited. I mean, I, look, listen, again, I was like, really? He's the son of some famous communist? I knew who Frank Marshall Davis was. I'm like, I knew he was in his book. I read it. I'm like, really, really? And then I sort of, and then I watched it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It, it, it's just like my, my brain goes, bing, that's it. I mean, my dad's like, okay, I'm going to go watch this. He's like, oh, my God, this is, this is conclusive. I mean, I mean, you watch this, you know, and then you know he's being blackmailed. People are like, well, so what if his dad's a commie? The point is he's totally compromised. Right. He's what we call a red diaper baby. A red diaper baby is the child of a Communist Party USA member. Red All doper red diaper baby. Red, that's right. I've heard that from you. The red doper diaper babies are the guys that were the head of the Weather Underground, Jeff Jones, Catherine Boudin, all these people that were nuts, ended up half up, ended up in jail with uh, weapons charges. Uh, even David Axelrod is a red diaper. Okay, in, in okay your, Skype, your Skype cut out right there. Start over with Axelrod. Okay. David Axelrod is a red diaper baby. His mother was a communist journalist, just like Obama, and she wrote for PM newspaper in New York City. So we have in the White House a red diaper baby, the child of a Communist Party USA member. Uh, Obama's biological father was Davis. That means he lied and bamboozled the country, and that he's a forger of documents as well as a liar. He, indoctrinate, he was indoctrinated by Davis in his formative years. So his ideological father, biology is dangerous enough given the, the red diaper DNA, but he, that's his ideological father. Uh, Davis indoctrinated him with an anti-white worldview. Obama writes about it in his own book. I'd encourage people after they watch Dreams from My Real Father, if you go back and read Dreams from My Father, Obama drops a tremendous number of breadcrumbs. He talks about going to Frank Marshall Davis's house with his grandfather, and he says there was some unspoken contract between the two of them. He talks about Davis in glowing terms. He talks about how he doesn't want to talk to his, tell people that his mother is white. He's an admirer of Malcolm X. On and on, it's clear that Obama is the ideological and biological son of Frank Marshall Davis, a red diaper baby in the White House. No one could have imagined this, and it never could have happened without this cover up that there was a Kenyan goat herder. Oh, my God. The rule of the red diaper president. That's what's going on. Oh, my God. Well, look, I look forward to getting you back on the radio with these updates next week. Just stay in touch. Uh, the uh, film is bombshell. Joel Gilbert's Dreams of My Real Father, available at InfoWarsShop.com. And it's also on your site. Give folks that. Yeah, you can uh, see the trailer, read all the press. DVD is there as well. It's Obama's Real Father dot com.
All right. Well, uh, Joel Gilbert, thank you so much for spending time with us. We're going to go to break and come back with our next interview with Dr. Joel Wallach, uh, talking about the socialist, globalist health care takeover. My God, this is a bad day. But truth striking back, folks. This is not a game. We're not just fighting against some out-of-control people that are, you know, mean well, but are, you know, but are idiots. These are dangerous people. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. All right. Once, once you see my film, you'll agree with Alex's dad that... Uh, it's it's uh, literally a horror movie, uh, what's happening with the socialist in power. Uh, I mean, let me tell you, he was blown away. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, there goes Joel Gilbert. We're going to go to break and come back with Dr. Joel Wallach uh, right after uh, this quick break. So stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. Get the film at InfoWarsShop.com. Thank you. We'll be right back. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. Well, you want it, you got it. Dr. Joel Wallach, one of the top researchers in his field, joins us. He is a true trailblazer. He doesn't like talking about himself, but I'm going to make him do it. I'm going to put him on the spot. He has defeated the FDA repeatedly. Uh, I've had other researchers and, and news people on, and they've said, you didn't know Wallach's the guy that helped sue and get law put in place to defend the right to buy vitamins, minerals, and things. I mean, I knew about that famous ruling and that act, but I didn't know that Wallach was involved. Went and looked it up, sure enough. Uh, I didn't you know, know all this about Wallach. I worked for a large animal vet several summers and then part of a year. Uh, I also worked for a small animal vet before that. And so I knew all about that when winter's coming, they'd say, put them on these minerals. Okay, they're starting to calf, put them on these. You'll get birth defects. You'll get uh, miscarriages. So for me, that was really common sense, but he is a veterinarian. He's also a, uh, a, a doctor for humans as well, and I already went over his bio on the radio today, but I wanted to get him back on and talk about the victories he's had, because we talk about victories with this big government takeover of healthcare defeat, uh, and also then how he made the discovery and accelerated the knowledge that was there on minerals about what plants need a couple, we need 60, and then what the uh, you know 90 for life is, why you need those trace elements that some would say are poisonous, and, and how that to be properly delivered. We're going to go over all that with him today uh, and talk about his plan that he's written about for years to defeat the socialist health care if they got it in place. In fact, a few times ago I had him on, he said, I think they're going to rule in favor of it. We, we need to talk about defeating it, but I moved on. So we're going to talk about all those subjects. By the way, when you look at him, and if you see him in videos on stage, it's even more pronounced. He looks like somebody who's healthy, who's 60, 65, maybe tops. Dr. Wallach is 73 years old. And uh, there he is on screen, and he is a, 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 a truthaholic like I am. Travels all over the country and the world, Australia, you name it, exposing what's happening. And uh, we've got to get healthy. I'm just starting my journey and had dramatic effects with Longevity and InfoWarsTeam.com last year. Aaron Dykes has lost 92 pounds, as you know. I've been so busy, I haven't even produced pieces showing that yet. But, the, but you've seen Aaron on the show. You've seen him host the show. 92 pounds. Now he's in the building muscle phase. It's incredible. But I'm ranting. Enough of my endorsement. The reason I'm we're talking about this is not just because it helps fund our news organization and the other Liberty Projects we're involved in, what we do with InfoWarsTeam.com, but it's also about a revolution against these tyrants and trying to get as healthy as we can so that they just can't sit there and poison us and then use all these deficiencies to control us and make us weak and sell us treatments, not cures, but, but treatments for things that they've helped engineer and cause. And it's also a business opportunity 
for info warriors out there who are already in sales or already have news websites, uh, who are already involved in other things, you can become a distributor with InfoWars and work with our team. The phone number's there. You can also pay $10 and you know, kind of like Costco signing up to get discounts. You, we've got a free shipping deal there when you qualify with AutoShip at InfoWarsTeam.com. But I'm done ranting. That's not why Dr. Wallach is here today. But every time I get him on about something, I start saying, by the way, we've got you know a big part of the solution here. Uh, beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, Rebound. Uh, we've also, in fact, I just called Dew's. I forgot to bring these in here. Dew's got uh, what's part of the Alex packs, what they call it. Beyond Tangy Tangerine uh, and the Longevity Osteo FX uh, and some of the other products are absolutely essential. But enough of that. Dr. Wallach, tell us about your victories, your awakening, what you've done. Uh, and then I want you to get into what this big healthcare ruling means and what we're what we're facing with this medical mafia run by the big insurance companies well thank you so much uh, for all the kind words alex and uh, again kind of following up on our show earlier today the um uh, flexner report back in 1914 set all this in motion this is when the government began to take over medical care uh, this is where the big corporations like um the rockefellers uh, actually took over medical care. They started funding all the big universities were using the um, pharmaceuticals were made from petroleum and they didn't do anything directly to the herbal medical schools or the homeopathic medical schools. They just didn't fund them and students, being students, they went to the to the schools that had all the money and all the, the cute gizmos and were getting grants and so forth and so these other schools kind of dried up well, that was a huge um, um, mistake from the standpoint of American health because the pharmaceutical industry, uh, insurance came along not sh too long after that. And that combination of the pharmaceutical industry, which uh, with the exception of antibiotics, Alex, most people don't know this, with the exception of antibiotics, which can cure a throat or gangrene in your leg, uh, uh, bacterial pneumonia, with the exception of antibiotics, uh, there is not a single drug out there that cures any disease. All other pharmaceuticals, all other drugs, over-the-counter and um, prescription, only treat symptoms, with the exception of antibiotics. There's no law requiring a doctor to cure you, Alex, when um, you're sick, even if there's a cure available. And so it's incumbent, it's actually uh, our responsibility to know these things like Grandma used to know. So this is why my wife and I wrote all these books, was to try and get the information out. We actually sued the FDA out of our own pocket eight times in federal court. We prevailed all eight times. And uh, many of them had to do with birth defects of things like folic acid, preventing spina bifida and all other neurotube defects. Uh, we'd known that in the animal By the way, I looked this up when I heard this a few years ago, but I, but I didn't look it all up. I looked up more now. It's all true. You're one of the only people to ever beat them, and you beat them over and over again. So much of the health freedom we have today is because you took action. Well, that's true, and I thank you for bringing that up. Um, and uh, again, I appreciate your support on that. Uh, you know, we never ask anybody for any money, but it was just kind of the right thing to do. And we knew we could prevail in, in federal court. And most other people were afraid of repercussions. They say, well, the government's going to go after you if you do that. And I said, well, you know, let them come. Um, what are you going to do, put me in jail? I mean, what else can they do? And so they, I guess they could take shots at me. But but uh, this was so terrible that all these kids were being born with these birth defects like spina bifida, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, heart defects, um, missing limbs, um, hernias, uh, every kind of facial thing you can think of, cleft palate, cleft lip. Um, these are totally preventable. Cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, both of those are not only preventable, Alex, but are even fixable after the baby's born. In fact, um, uh, we actually, I received an award uh, last year in 2011, an international award uh, for uh, discovering the cause, prevention, and cure of cystic fibrosis. Actually discovered it 35 years ago. It's actually a little belated uh, reward, if you would, uh, uh, recognition, but I finally got it out there. We're going to have a lot more coming up here so the general public will realize we can actually prevent and reverse uh, cystic fibrosis. We're actually able to reverse the genetic markers. So we know it's not a genetic disease. By the way, I no. want to just interrupt. I, I said I wasn't because I was saying Paraguay, Uruguay. I always get them confused. It was Paraguay. My dad goes down to Belize. He goes down to Central South America once a year as part of a group he's with to give free health care. 
Mm -hmm. Because that's what doctors, as you know, that's not something yes. special nowadays, even though people don't do it, that you were taught in, 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 in medicine to do it. My dad's a dentist and oral surgeon. Mm -hmm. And when he was down for the first time ever in what they call the Green Hell, Paraguay, uh, he was down there in the landlocked country. And the Amish are the only ones that built the country up in the north. They turned the desert green. But they have found and discovered, and like the one of the main leaders is, uh, uh, of the country, who's Amish, uh, has discovered that the children were becoming, you know, being born mentally retarded or being born with deformities because they didn't have minerals. And they've got these little clinics where they just give them mineral packs and suddenly it's reversing that. So, so sure, you've, you've helped discover this, foster so much of it, but it turns out all over the world this is a revolution where people are discovering that, well, it's like China. Uh, finding out their peasants, so many of them were having all, uh, deformities or, or 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 birth defects because they weren't getting minerals. I mean, this is this is hiding in plain view, is my point. Because my dad, about a year and a half ago, he's like, minerals. I get the minerals I need. Yeah, I know there's some deficiencies, but I grow stuff in the garden now. What I, you know, I don't need that longevity stuff. My mom started taking it and had big results. But then he went down to Paraguay. Uh, or Uruguay. What's the landlocked one? It was Paraguay. He was there when the guy threw the hand grenade uh, in at the soccer game and blew people up. My dad actually saw that. It was in the BBC. He told me about it when he got back. I went and looked it up, and there it was. But, but the point is, he was down there and witnessed this for himself. And, and they found out, they said, oh, all these street children, they're mentally retarded because, because they've been sniffing glue. Turned out that wasn't what it was. They weren't getting minerals. That's exactly right, Alex. Your dad's a very shrewd observer, and I'm um, sure that was genetically passed on to you. Um, and, of course, um, mustard dystrophy is another one. And here's a case, and I had, actually had this confirmed two days ago. My theory was that we'd been sending, actually, we'd been sending Jerry Lewis for two years um, uh, emails and hard copy of the kids we're curing of mustard dystrophy. And last year, Jerry Lewis was not um, the host on, on the telethon for the first time in 22 years. Nobody said anything. It's just Jerry's not here. That's it. Uh, he was sent. He was literally sent on a cruise so nobody could ask him anything. And he's, oh, he's sick. Well, no, even on a deathbed, he'd be saying, take care of Jerry's kids, right? And it turns out that they fired him because he brought all my data to the medical committee. And they said, hey, Jerry, this is just months before the telethon. And we won't make any money if people realize there's a cure, so you're fired. They fired Jerry Lewis because they brought him, he brought the medical committee, my data, and they just made a clean sweep. They fired everybody in the Mustard History Foundation who is loyal to Jerry Lewis just in the last couple of months. And this, this year, they're only going to have a two-hour telethon instead of a 24-hour telethon. And it's all going to be pre-recorded so nobody can interrupt it. By the way, this is a big news story, and I have no doubt it's true. But, but, but I mean, how did you how did you learn about this? Because we need to get a story out on this. Okay. Well, I actually theorized that because we had been sending him all this data, and his personal assistant said how wonderful this was, and Jerry was excited. And I said, "Look, we're not looking for any money from the Mustard History Foundation. We were looking for uh, just Jerry. The, give him the opportunity to make the announcement. After all, you know, everybody in their own mind knows that Mustard History kids are Jerry's kids." And I thought it was only fair, even though we had made the discovery, we thought it was only fair with all the efforts he'd put forth for 22 years, it was only fair that he was given the opportunity to make the announcement that the cure had been found. And so we'd been sending him all this data, and then suddenly he's fired. And so it had to have, so I guessed it. Well, just a couple of days ago, I called uh, his personal assistant and asked, I said, okay, I'm theorizing this, I've been saying this, this is, this is my belief over the years, and she said, yes, you're quite correct. And she was the one who volunteered that Mustard History Foundation had fired all of um, uh, his uh, uh, supporters at the Mustard History Foundation. If they even looked like they liked Jerry Lewis, they fired them all. And the, the telephone. Wow, so oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You noticed that you were in contact giving him info. He was suddenly gone. Yeah. You called her back and she confirmed that. That's correct. Good Lord. Yeah, so I've, I've talked to her many times. I've probably talked to her a dozen times over the last year, uh, again, saying, look, we're not looking for any money from the Mustard Dish Foundation. We just want to give Jerry the opportunity because we're going to have a huge announcement coming out here uh, in a couple of months. Uh, cystic fibrosis announcements are coming out as we speak uh, very quickly in the next couple of days. Uh, this, uh, we know the cause for engine cure. We've actually known it for 35 years, but I'm starting to get 
the reversal of the genetic markers, so there's no doubt about it. And these are independent hospitals on hospital letterhead. They're freaking out because they couldn't believe it was possible, and they retested it, and the retests were better than the original test. And so they're very excited about this. And that's for cystic fibrosis. Now, mustard dystrophy is the same thing. And uh, even kids who've been in wheelchairs for 20 years, they get up and walk. Kids who have had it for two or three or four years who can't stand up longer than a minute or two, they fall down, are now playing basketball, and they'll knock you down to make a point. But that's just like scurvy. I, I was even yeah. reading in mainline literature that a lot of times the hospitals won't test for nutritional deficiencies. Your teeth are falling out. Your skin's falling apart. They don't ask, hey, you're drinking nothing but Coca-Cola's and eating Doritos all day or eating Cheetos. You're starving to death. It's not, explain empty calories versus nutrients. Well, empty calories, as you point out, Alex, are like um, um, bread that, uh, and grain that's actually grown in soil that only has three minerals. And as you pointed out earlier, plants only need three minerals, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Everything else the plant needs they get from the air and they get from uh, the sun's energy. Everything else they need is amazing that plants are able to do this. And so we need 60. So if you're eating a pretty good slice of organically grown bread, that's um, multi-grain bread, you're, you could be 57 minerals short because the plant only needs three. And you can't tell by looking at it whether it has three or 18 or 12 or 10 or six or, you, or 20 or 40. You can't tell by looking at it because it only needs three. We need 60. And so we're, you know, medical doctors only have 30 minutes of nutritional training in 14 years of medical school, and they don't get a test on it. So most of the time they're off in the bathroom smoking pot when that 30 minutes is given because they know they're not going to get tested on it. And then they teach dietitians and nutritionists what they know about nutrition. So 50% of nothing is not much. We're in veterinary medicine. Nutrition is everything because we don't have insurance. And that's the reason why we, we've cured 900 different diseases in animals. Think about it, Alex. 60 years ago, an old dog was eight years old. Today, an old dog is 25. We've eliminated 900 different diseases in dogs that still plague humans. We've eliminated every birth defect you can name by putting all these vitamins and minerals in oh, the dog. Oh, let me stop you. I bought, because I saw that, that we had this, so we went to the vet the next time, and or uh, well, well, one time to the vet, the other time to the pet smart place. Mm -hmm. None of the toothpaste for dogs had sodium fluoride in it, and I meant to bring that today and show you well, why don't we need the poison sodium fluoride for dogs? Because, <laughs> well, a dog only needs about 300 micrograms, about a third of a milligram of, of fluoride to keep his bones hard. We only need one milligram. Well, between what the government puts in the water, between what you find in toothpaste and mouthwash, and the dentist paint the kid's teeth with it, and you might get a little bit, if you're lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, get some natural fluoride out of your own drinking water, you could wind up with 25 milligrams of fluoride which again can be, in fact, uh, toxic. And so we're just getting too much of a good thing in that case. You only need one milligram to have healthy bones and teeth. And we know that in dogs, we control everything in dogs where we don't control everything in humans. That's my next question. Some of the products, and I've noticed some of the other elite products out there as well, not just longevity, have tiny amounts of arsenic and things. And again, I hate to talk about my dad, but I remember when, you know, going back like 15 years ago, I'd be talking about, about fluoride and arsenic in the water. And, and, and he'd say, there's too much of it, but you need some of that or you die. And he'd explain how for, for chemical processes or to even be able to upload, to, to use a layman term, all the vitamins and minerals are together, that those trace elements somehow allow the unlocking of it or the bridging of the use and cell function. Now, now I know you're an expert in this, did the tens of thousands of autopsies over a decade, you know, for the federal government in, in animal testing and, and, and in zoological... And in uh, 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 specimens that have died. So explain to me in scientific terms what I just said. Is that accurate? Or explain why some of the products do have very small amounts of things that people would call toxic. Well, um, actually, arsenic we've known is an essential nutrient, just like calcium and copper and zinc um, and phosphorus. Uh, we've known it since 1947. Um, it actually prevents certain types of leukemia, can actually cure, arsenic can cure certain types of leukemia uh, because uh, leukemia is an arsenic deficiency. And then uh, you have something like cadmium, which is thought of to be toxic, uh, yet it actually can take the place of zinc. There's 50,000 zinc dependent enzymes that work in your body every second as we're alive. And if you're deficient in zinc, you should be happy that there's cadmium in our products because it takes the place, uh, fully takes the place of zinc when it's missing and will actually activate the zinc dependent enzymes. 
then uh, people all get all freaked out about aluminum because um, it was a, um, what should I say, a, a terrible, incorrect, terribly incorrect study that was done on aluminum. When they said aluminum has something to do with Alzheimer's disease, aluminum has nothing to do with Alzheimer's disease. But that false um, report came out from a very bad study where they were taking slices of human brain that had uh, Alzheimer's disease, and they put the slices on an aluminum tray, and they put them in an acid stain to stain the cells. Well, the acid stain took the aluminum out of the tray and impregnated the brain tissue with it. So when they tested the brain tissue, they had lots of aluminum. Oh, there is a cause of Alzheimer's disease. Well, then two weeks later, a very clever Frenchman took that same, very same brain, took similar slices from the same brain with Alzheimer's disease, put it on a glass tray, and there was no aluminum in there. And they came out and said that was an incorrect report, but everybody got... Uh, Dr. Blaylock, who, as you know, is a top retired brain surgeon, developed many of the surgeries. He's concurred with some of the analysis you've had. He says it is, it is a continually inflamed brain from all the toxins, chemicals, MSG, but more importantly, the statin drugs literally are disintegrating the brain. That's what he says. What do you say? I say he's exactly correct. I've been saying this since 1971, Alex. Alzheimer's disease is a physician-caused disease. Uh, you get put on a um, um, cholesterol-restricted diet. You're eating egg beaters instead of eggs. You're eating boneless, skinless chicken breast. You're eating tofu instead of red meat. You're eating margarine instead of butter and cream. Uh, you're getting on cholesterol-restricted drug, uh, excuse me, cholesterol-lowering drugs like statin drugs. You're going to get Alzheimer's disease as sure as there's gravity. And so every baby boomer who is born between 1946 and 1964 will get Alzheimer's disease if they don't get off of statin drugs today. We know in the last 10,000 years, the human CC size of the cranium gets bigger and bigger as we move from being agrarians to eating meat. That's why our brain's gotten bigger. We're a meat-eating creature. Yeah, that's true. And, and I mean, that's what this is. I mean, correct me from the anthropology and the, and the archaeology. And so now we're taking that out of our diet. Well, our brain's going to disintegrate. It needs it. Well, you're exactly right, and that's why we have Alzheimer's disease, because 75% of our brain weight, Alex, is myelin, this white matter of the brain, the insulation material of the brain, and myelin is almost 100%. It's like 99.9% .9 cholesterol, so you don't have the raw materials in a cholesterol-restricted diet, and when you're taking statin drugs, you don't have enough raw material just to maintain your brain. We're Everything an oil-based electrochemical computer. I mean, that's our brain. <laughs> well, that's what doctors want you to believe, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but I mean, they're talking about, and people think I'm joking, folks, pull this up. They want to put statins in the water and make three-year-olds take it now. And, and, and now let's move to government-run health care. In my gut, not just intellectually, I am, I've never been more horrified. The IRS is going to enforce this as a tax to the insurance companies, hospitals, and doctors. They say that in their own words. That is correct. And, and you, you know that they, they've hired like 7,500 new IRS agents to deal with Medicare and Medicaid and to deal with the money coming in, all this new money coming in from the affordable um, health care thing, AKA Obamacare. Uh, this is gonna be the biggest hit on the middle class since the Great Depression. It's gonna be awful. And what scares me, Alex, is there's not a single thing they're doing in all this change in, in the medical care that does anything for the patient. All it does is tax people to get money to pay the insurance companies and the, and the doctors. Take your Jerry Lewis thing, and I want you to continue. You yes. never hear about find the cause of breast cancer exploding over 2,000%. It's always find the cure. That'd be like if people were getting shot in their homes at night, they'd say, find a way to cure bullet wounds instead of finding out who's shooting people in their beds. Exactly the same. Very great analogy. Very well said. And of course, again, there's no law requiring doctors to cure you. And I think in the old days, before there was insurance, um, doctors, general practitioners, tended to be part of the family, part of the church community, and they really loved the people they were working with. They did everything they could to help them. Uh, once insurance came on the scene, the primary uh, motivation of the, of the family practitioner and the primary care physician was to milk uh, all of your um, insurance funds from your insurance policy. And once they couldn't uh, get any more money from it, they said, well, medical science has done everything we can, that we can't do anything for anymore because they knew you couldn't pay them anymore. It's absolutely, it, somebody needs to go to jail over this because uh, doctors have actually uh, spent their whole life learning how to get the money out of your insurance policy. Well, uh, what I suggest is that people actually 
uh, get a $5,000 deductible, a catastrophic care only health care um, uh, insurance policy. It'll cost them for a family of five, 100 bucks a month, $5,000 deductible, put $100 away every month or 50 bucks away every month to build up that $5,000 and get on the 90 for life, take our 90 essential nutrients, the 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, three essential fatty acids. And like a dog, think about it, Alex, we only take a dog to a veterinarian once a year to get a rabies shot because it's the law. And dogs live to be 25 years old and they don't get macular degeneration, they don't get arthritis, they don't get heart disease, they don't get diabetes unless you're feeding them table scraps and, and doing things that you're not supposed to be doing to them. And or they get hit by a car, maybe they have some trauma. Uh, the same way thing would be true of people. I mean, I have not been to a doctor with me being the patient for 64 years. I have never been on a prescription drug. If everybody was like me, Alex, doctors would be very humble. Insurance companies would be very humble because nobody would be afraid of getting sick. Well, all I know is the statistics. I mean, we lead the world wherever there's this new Western MD Rockefeller medicine in cancer, neurological disorders, uh, degeneration of the bones, uh, the list goes on and on, heart problems. I mean, the more health care we get, the more unhealthy we get. And I see the studies about how they have the worst food in a hospital. It's worse than McDonald's. I mean, I knew that I knew decades ago the Rockefellers, on record, took over the hospitals, made them uh, tax-free, but they're really profit. Uh, they don't teach doctors anymore. They're supposed to do a third of their care for free. They don't talk about charity care, so they want this government care. I, I mean, really, this is a medical tyranny, and it's the enemy. I mean, you can't get me near a hospital. Every week or so, someone I know or someone's wife or husband or one of the uh, friends of my seven-year-old daughter we'd been out with and, and, and been to sporting events with that our children were in. Healthy guy, had a little bit of a back problem, went in to have a surgery, the MD told him, died of an infection. I mean, I was drinking coffee with this guy three weeks ago. They said, oh, have a surgery. Dead. Um, I mean, it's incredible. It, it, it's just, I am, I am, well, there's one thing I'm scared of, that's a hospital. Well, that was on a cover article on this um um, let's see, the May, May issue of um, uh, ARP Bulletin, they said the most dangerous place to be in America is in a hospital. And the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, came out in 1998, Alex, and said, uh, and that's the federal agency that tracks these things, and they said that um, medical doctors infect 2 million patients each year in hospitals, of which 90,000 die. And that's because they wear the same white coat, they never wash their can uh, hands, they never wash their butts probably, pardon me, um, they, um, they wear the same shoes, the same trousers, the same pantyhose from room to room to room without cleaning up. They drag pee and poop and pus and blood uh, from room to room with all the viruses and bacteria. They transmit these two, two million infections, 90,000 deaths, and nobody goes to jail. They all get a walk. We treat pigs better in a barn because it's a federal requirement that you uh, disinfect your boots before you go into the next pig pen. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean that's how it is. You, you, you I mean, you put on new booties because I've been in, I've, I've been in there, and you spray chemicals on your feet before you go to each. But oh, you don't do this at a hospital though. These are these are death pits. You know, my dad. Whenever I broke my leg really bad and had to have surgery, he was so concerned and found the best hospital and was all concerned about stuff. And they still almost killed me. Uh, and I mean, it's it just these hospitals are nightmare facilities, and and I. I read a lot that cancer, I know, is, is, is triggered by mineral deficiencies, but also viral. I mean, the viruses that hit you if you've got the mineral deficiency, that's also, I know, associated with hormonal tissues. But, but, but what's going on with all the vaccines as well assaulting us? Well, <clears throat> the vaccines have a place when, when there's raging epidemics and 10,000 people are dying a day. It's worth the risk at that point to get a vaccination. Um, nobody should be getting flu vaccinations or childhood vaccinations today in industrialized nations like the United States. Uh, if they're fed well, they're getting their 90 essential nutrients that supports their immune system. They practice good hygiene, they wash their hands before they eat, um, you know, wash themselves every day, keep their body count down of bugs. Um, there's no need for vaccinations now. That was something um, that went along back uh, 150, 200, 300 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, when vaccinations were actually first uh, created. 
um, for smallpox is where the vaccinations were first created uh, back in the African tribes uh, thousands of years ago. And that was useful uh, because their hygiene was terrible, their water was unclean. But uh, because we have, um, from the standpoint of infectious organisms, our water is very good. Other problems, but from the standpoint of infectious organisms, they're, they're, it's germ-free. And so these, these epidemics are, are water transmitted and food transmitted epidemics. So if everything's clean, we don't need to have vaccinations. That's right. That. As usual, you're dead on target from my own research, from all the mainline scientists I've had on. If you look at the Western world, by the 20s and 30s, we can, we've pulled these graphs up before, when they start getting indoor plumbing, when you're not throwing your crap out in the backyard, excuse my language, when all this is happening, you see all these infectious diseases go way down. Then the 40s come and 50s in vaccines and infectious diseases actually go back up. Not like they were, but, but they go back up. And then I saw in California, they're like, we've got a forced whooping cough, oh, whooping cough shots. It, we had hundreds of cases. And then you go learn the statistics, 60 plus percent of the cases were people who were vaccinated and the other cases were vectored by the vaccine. I mean, I saw where the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, group vaccinated millions of kids for polio. They only had a few hundred cases a year in India still. And 46,000 got paralyzed. A bunch of them died. Excuse me, 47,000. I, I mean, whoa. And it's like, oh, well, it, it killed a bunch of them, but that's okay. And spread a weaponized polio. I mean, this is madness. And, and by the way, you mentioned AARP. My guys, yep. while you talk, type in what you say. Because we fact check you as well, buddy. And, that's right. And, and, and they found AARP. It was worse than you said. Put it back up. Was it? One in seven going in the hospital are being killed by bad care, not by what they went in for. So, uh, let's, let's put that back up uh, because I'm going from memory. It was just up there a few minutes ago. I, I mean, this is incredible. I mean, it's not hype. They know most of its mineral deficiencies. ARP, hospitals yep, yep. may be the worst place to stay when you're sick. And yeah, scroll down some more. One study of Medicare patients found that one in seven died or were harmed by their hospital care. I mean, there it is. Boom. Yeah, and the the uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services came out in November of last year, and they said that um, medical doctors kill 15,000 Medicare patients in hospitals each month. And that included Andy Rooney from 60 Minutes and Dick Clark from American Bandstand. They both died of complications of, quote, minor outpatient medical procedures. It wasn't minor for them. It killed them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, one more thing, and, I, and I, just, I just realized this the last few months, and I always meant to say it, but have it. Since I've been religiously taking moderate amounts of longevity, I, I just have never been somebody drinking shakes and drinking mixtures and taking pills, but I'm getting better at it. Since I did like 30% of the program, I used to have, just a year ago, allergies so bad that I had headaches so bad that I could hardly get out of bed during Austin's like the capital of allergies a few months out of the year. Now I sneeze a little, that's it. I, I mean, it's incredible what it's doing. What was happening, Dr. Wallach, with, with my allergies? What was the deficiency or, or, or what was happening that they were excruciating? Well, there's multiple deficiencies that can uh, actually make your body prone to allergies. And it could be everything from salt uh, deficiencies uh, because salt is required to make stomach acid and stomach acid is required for your digestive enzymes to work and if you can't digest proteins down to the simplest of amino acids you get um, large uh, uh, chains of amino acids called polypeptides absorbed you get allergies to them and when you start taking all these nutrients again including sodium and chloride it actually makes your digestion work better you break these proteins down to the simplest of amino acids and food allergies go away and it can happen in, in weeks or months. It, it's just awesome what your body can do when you give it the raw materials, including sodium and chloride, uh, two elements um, that are necessary for proper digestion and nerve transmission. And then you have um, uh, deficiencies of things like selenium. Um, heart attacks, of course, um, and your, your defenses against um, all kinds of pollens, viruses, bacteria require selenium. Well, selenium... Uh, is a wonderful thing that actually helps recycle glutathione, the most potent antioxidant your body makes, makes your liver work better, your immune system, your spleen, all your lymph nodes work better. And um, uh, you get a wonderful amount of selenium that's called selenomethionine, which is the perfect way to get selenium. Actually, the guy, uh, Dr. Uh, 
uh, Gerhard Schrauser, the guy who discovered in 1957 that selenium is an essential nutrient, actually helped us formulate this so we got the selenium perfect and we're just so very excited about that being in there. And by getting all these things, there's actually 115 super juices in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Alex. 115 super juices, which give you the antioxidants again to support your immune system to fend off these allergens that you get from the air, uh, from the dust, from water, uh, from your food. And uh, so once you get all these raw materials, your body is remarkable enough to be able to take in these raw materials and defend itself. It's just, you know, like a rebel. Say, so just give me the bullets. I'll, I'll do my own fight. And so give your body all the 90 essential nutrients. And, and I get so many people who just are messed up with allergies. They become dysfunctional. And you get them on the 90 essential nutrients, get rid of some of the bad food. And guess what? All their allergies go away. It's really amazing. And, and, and then from the food allergy in your stomach, it then triggers other allergies in the environment. And, and, and then it's just a chain reaction, a cascading reaction. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't like how Beyond Tangy Tangerine and stuff tasted. I always like the pollen burst when I first started using it. And then I developed, it was strange, in just a month, a taste for it. I have trouble. One daughter likes it. My son will drink it. The four-year-old hates it. How do I get the four-year-old to take the products? Okay, very easy. What you do is you get a bottle of cherry mints, and it tastes like, as the name implies, cherry juice. And you put the cherry mints, which are the 77 certified organic plant minerals, with black cherry extract in it and eight drops of apple juice per ounce. And uh, you give them a teaspoon for 20 pounds of body weight twice a day, and you add that to their OsteoVex Plus. Um, it tastes like kind of a cherry's jubilee. Uh, That's oh, exactly. So I give them cherry mints mixed with the Osseo FX. That's the answer. Oh, yes, sir. That's the answer. Could I mix it into their yogurt? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You mix it in with anything. It works well with just about anything. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of people will add it to just their drinking water. Um, I, I, I've had people add it to milk or other juices or anything. Um, or you can actually add the Cocoa Jivity, which is a liquid chocolate. You can add that to... Uh, the Osteo FX Plus and actually get a, a coconut uh, chocolate drink. Is uh, people like chocolate? You can make it as chocolate as you want by adding more of the liquid chocolate. Called and all that is at InfoWarsTeam.com. In fact, for people out there that don't want to do it on the line, they can call and do it, and, and, and it can actually become if you want an InfoWars Team member who actually answers the phones if you go through the process with us and you know get vetted and picked. We have a great team uh, at InfoWarsTeam.com. If you guys put the screen up there, it's eight. 775-551-1301, 877-551-1301. I only promote what I believe in. And again, and now almost two years ago, time flies, uh, Ted Anderson is like, hey, you ought to check this out. You know, my knee, I was going to have to have surgery. I went on the Osteo FX and other stuff. I'm better. And then it was, oh, yeah, my dad had Alzheimer's, and then he came back in six months on this, but the doctor said no, so we went off of it now, didn't know who he is. Okay, MD's God, and Ted allows me to tell that story so we can save others. But I want that's you know Ted's Ted's mom believes that you know the guy, and I, I I shouldn't even get into it. He said I could, but it just feels weird even talking about it. But then Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. It's not even advertised as weight loss. Then I lost 40 plus pounds. I mean I was getting obese, and my mother was like, okay, I'll try it. She's done vitamins and stuff. She said this is incredible. She's a triathlete, swim further, run faster, bike faster. She said, I mean, lost, she lost like 35 pounds. And I remember why I was even getting off into this. The point is, I promote what I believe in, uh, but it's just amazing that the system obviously knows this but wants to keep it from people just so they can have us debilitated. Well, yeah, they make their living, Alex, uh, by having you sick. Uh, that's when I ask my audiences, and I give my 300 free lectures a year, when do doctors make the most money, when you're well or when you're sick? They, they make money when you're sick, and there's no law requiring them to cure you when you're sick, okay? And there's no law requiring them to teach you how to prevent diseases when there are preventions available. And so this is where, for our own protection, we need to know certain things. It's almost biblical. You know, my, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? And so um, it, it's one of those things where um, it, it just by a little bit of knowledge, uh, be prepared. Uh, again, if everybody were like yourself and me uh, taking these things, you don't, I haven't been sick in 64 years. I have not been sick, Alec, in 64 years. And the only time I visit doctors is usually to their funerals. My wife saves me the obituaries when I come home if it's 
timely. I, I visit their funerals and find out, you know, they're 36 years old. Briefly older. explain that. Why do you call your syndicated radio show Dead Doctors Don't Lie? Well, Alex, because the average lifespan of medical doctors, according to their own survey, which came out in every medical journal in America, uh, 1999, is 56. And why would you go to a group of people whose average lifespan is 56 to learn how to live to be 120 in a healthful way? And they're actually not. By the, the way, the doctor that fixed my leg never got the pin out because he was 54 years old, looked completely healthy, did my surgery. Two weeks later, had a heart attack. They said, well, he's, he's gone down at the coast trying to get better. And I called back to take the pin out. Oh, he's dead. And I've seen that. Uh, dentist, my dad knows, all are constantly dying. I mean, what is going on with these people? Well, they know nothing about nutrition, and they exercise. Uh, and when you sweat, you sweat out more than water. Sweat is not water. It's all of the nutrients floating around in your blood. So whatever you might accidentally get from your food is being sweat out. The harder you exercise, the more of these nutrients you sweat out. You drink water to rehydrate. There's no minerals in there. And you drink something, you know, one of these um, um, energy drinks that have or, or uh, sports drinks that have only two nutrients in it. Uh, that you're 88 short, and so we actually have a sports drink called Rebound that has all 100 nutrients in it, and it replaces everything you're sweating out. And um, I actually did 1,200 autopsies on kids under the age of 10 who died of cardiomyopathy heart disease, which is the sudden death that these athletes mostly die from. Some die from ruptured aneurysms, which is a copper deficiency. But most of them die suddenly from a cardiomyopathy heart attack, which is a selenium deficiency. And I'm the only guy who's ever done 1,200 autopsies on kids under the age of 10, published in an international journals in both English and Chinese, so nobody can doubt it because, you know, they had referees that checked everything out. And um, these are the sort of things that we can prevent in kids by simply supplementing them with these nutrients. And, and this is from doing things that are healthy. Doctors play tennis, they play golf, they go to the gym, and they exercise, and they kill themselves by sweating out these nutrients, drinking water, and not supplementing, and so they died 56. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I always see these guys that run marathons and stuff, and they die. And I've even seen a few articles. They think it was a, you know, uh, uh, what's the stuff that's in bananas? Oh, potassium deficiency? Yeah, potassium. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, it could be water intoxication in that case. A lot of uh, I think we lose about a thousand young athletes a year in the United States alone from water intoxication. They drink too much water in a short period of time, like they'll drink a gallon of water in 10, 15 seconds, and it dilutes out their blood potassium levels, and their heart will stop uh, when your potassium levels get too low. Your heart will just stop. And if it doesn't get started again in three or four minutes, you're dead. Well, most of these things, because doctors are ignorant, and they don't know about the selenium deficiency causing heart attacks, they make up things, and so is, they ponder around and they say, well, we know that a thousand people a year die from potassium um, deficiency because of this water intoxication. So maybe that's it. And most of the cases where they really don't know is from a selenium deficiency. And I get people off the heart transplant list. Now, this is a hard one to believe, but I, I actually get people who are on 27 prescription drugs, Alex, have been on the heart transplant list for three to five years. They have congestive heart failure, the number one cause of heart death in America, which is caused by deficiency of a single vitamin, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, heart disease, all in the same patient, which is a slim deficiency. They have coronary artery disease, which is caused by eating too many free radicals. Well, here's an example. Here's an example. <laughs> I <clears throat> swam almost two miles this morning. And mm -hmm. on the way back, I went out to the lake. My calf locked up. Uh, it, you know, got a Charlie horse in it. Think of the heart. It's beating your entire life. I mean, obviously, it runs out of the stuff it needs. You don't get a Charlie horse, you get a heart attack. What an incredible piece of equipment we've got that my calves get Charlie horses my heart never has. Well, you're lucky that, that uh, calf getting a heart attack is a kind of a red warning light, which may mean that you need more calcium. So a guy your size, you'll want to be taking in at least, especially if you're running, are swimming a lot, you need to take in three ounces of that Osteo FX Plus a day. I weigh 162 and I take in two ounces a day, one at breakfast, one at dinner, of the Osteo FX Plus along with everything else. And um, so you'll need to, so that'll stop those uh, calf cramps. Yeah, I gotta be honest, all I'm doing is Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the essential fatty acids with your little picture on it, 
uh, and some uh, 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 rebounds. Sometimes I don't work out, but uh, uh, pollen burst every day instead of coffee. And I, and, and I just, good. I need to make myself, yeah, but I just, I don't, some days I forget. I'm, I almost do it all the time now. I've just never been into it. So it's, it's really a chore to make yourself get used to that. You know, because I'll feel like, oh, I'm going to eat a big dinner and pig out. As long as I do some tangy tangerine right now, we're done with this interview. I won't even need dinner. You know, what I do is I prepare everything the night before and have it set out for myself so it's ready in the morning. And that's been a ritual with me for 64 years. I prepare everything the night before. And if you add uh, one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at dinner time, you will never have another Charlie Harse toe foot leg cramp. Well, I was swimming pretty hard, too, because I just enjoy it. Uh, I'm not even an exercise nut, but I'm, I can't believe how much I do work out, and I, and I don't look like uh, Bruce Lee. I used to, though. I, I did about 10 years of not working out and got in the shape I'm in now, but we're, we're back on that road. Well, listen, Dr. Wallach, thank you so much for all the time today, and I, I, I really appreciate you spending so much time. I know you've got to go. You've got to go give a speech here in just about 20 minutes or so. I know you tr How many speeches a year do you give? Uh, up until last year, I was giving 300 free lectures a year, but it's going to be closer to 400 this year because of several days a week now I'm doing three lectures a day. That does not count the radio interviews. No, you're a, you're a workhorse. You travel all over the world. Well, the war is on, and if we're going to save America, we need more people like Alex Jones, and so I'm just so happy to be associated with you, and, and uh, I'll support you in every way I can because um, InfoWarsTeam.com, um, with with the information you're putting out, we will be able to save America. And I just uh, can't thank you enough for all you do. Well, we're going to post this video and all your other interviews and material and your books, everything, are at InfoWarsTeam.com. Thank you, Dr. Wallet. Thank you, Alex. God bless you, sir. All right, God bless you. Wow, that is a big show today. The, go the globalist takeover of healthcare, all the other news, uh, and then we had the filmmaker on about the communist uh, real father of Obama, and now this information. This is real. This is important. And if you are not a member of InfoWarsTeam.com, it's called that for a reason. We sell, you know, the vitamins, the minerals, all of it discounted right there on the site. You pay ten bucks, and you get a discount on getting it. We got a free shipping deal there that's on the site as well. Got a lot of things that nobody else uh, you know, can offer there. But the most important point to all of this is that you become a member and then become a distributor. Because once you see the effects and realize this isn't hype, because I don't hype folks, I'm all about reality. That's why I've been promoted a bunch of other stuff. I get offers literally every week to promote other products. Once you do that, and once you become a member, and once you see the effects, then you can sell others because you've, you've had the effect. And, and, and then it's business for you in this faltering economy. So InfoWarsTeam.com, and one more time, there's a number uh, on that site as well, 877-551-1301, 877-551-1301. That's the InfoWars team, folks. We simply go through and see you know, who likes it, who's been the most successful with it, who'd like to work with us, and, and they become part of the phone team. Uh, and you can also you know, be part of, a, uh, of being a distributor, InfoWarsTeam.com. Great job to the crew. Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow night and back on the radio, 11 a.m. Central. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars Nightly News, and I want to thank Dr. Wallach for joining me.